Politicians have long liked to wrap themselves in Christian language to appeal to voters. One leader was especially good at it. Here's a quote from him. In this hour, I would ask the Lord God only this, that he would give his blessing to our work, that he may ever give us the courage to do the right. I'm convinced that men who are created by God should live in accordance with the will of the Almighty. No man can fashion world history unless upon his purpose and his powers there rest the blessings of this providence. Well, that may sound like an ideal leader, but that speech was actually given in 1937 by the Chancellor of Germany, Adolf Hitler. His speeches were filled with hope. He says, I'm going to restore the glory. In his speeches, he challenged people to love their neighbors, to care for the poor and sick, and to take a stand against violence. He also said, I believe today that I'm acting in the sense of the almighty creator. In public, Adolf Hitler often referred to himself as a follower of Christ. Even today, many people believe that the Holocaust was carried out in the name of Christianity. But what was the real relationship between God and Hitler? Adolf Hitler was the nastiest, most hate-filled, wicked man almost in history. And to say that he was a Christian is to be either tremendously ignorant or to be disingenuous. As a child, Adolf Hitler was baptized into the Catholic Church. He was an altar boy, and at one point, he even wanted to become a priest. But as history would later show, a church member and a Christian are two different things. At the beginning of his political career, Adolf Hitler was a baby kisser, believe it or not. Even nowadays, if you want to get anywhere as a politician, and you flavor your language and your speeches with maybe a Bible verse here and there, maybe have your picture taken with a robed minister outside his church on a Sunday, show up at a prayer breakfast and say something about God. And once you're in your place of political authority, then you, you can let your real agenda come out. And that's exactly what Hitler did. From his earliest speeches, Hitler invoked God, a smart political move in the mostly Christian nation of Germany. One of his most public shows of solidarity with the church was the signing of the Nazi Vatican Concord Dot in 1933. That pact was that the Catholic Church would support Adolf Hitler politically and Hitler would make sure they had freedom of religion. Hitler in 1933 said wonderful things about Christianity. He even said he hated atheism and wanted to get rid of it in the country. So Hitler was truly a wolf in sheep's clothing and he did pull the wool over the Catholic Church. So if Hitler wasn't a Christian, why did he go to so much trouble to win the support of the church? As one writer put it, he knew Christians would interfere with his plans if they weren't hoodwinked first. What you won't hear in history class is that Hitler wasn't just out to eliminate the Jews. He wanted to get rid of Christianity as well. Hitler youth leader Balder von Schirach admitted the destruction of Christianity was explicitly recognized as a purpose of the National Socialist Movement. And here's Nazi leader Alfred Rosenberg, a member of Hitler's inner circle. I am absolutely clear in my own mind and I think I can speak for the Fuhrer as well that both the Catholic and Protestant churches must vanish from the life of our people. In 1933, the German economy was in free fall, with unemployment over 30%. Germany was a nation in need of a savior, and Adolf Hitler decided that he would be the one to fill that role. As Hitler grew more powerful, his religious tolerance disappeared. 
and he tried to replace Christianity with a new Reich Church, a religion in which there was no God but Hitler. I think after a while, Hitler begins to believe in Hitler. Hitler set up a, a, a very a horrible antichrist system disguised as a Christian church. His fellow Nazis were only too happy to embrace the Fuhrer as Germany's messiah. It is only on one or two exceptional points that Christ and Hitler stand comparison. For Hitler is far too big a man to be compared with one so petty. Our Fuhrer is the intermediary between his people and the throne of God. Everything the Fuhrer utters is religion in the highest sense. And since every religion needs a house of worship, Hitler developed a 30-point plan for the new National Reich Church. It was even published in the New York Times in 1942. Among the rules, no pastors, chaplains, or priests were allowed to speak in church. Only National Reich orators. All Bibles and pictures of saints were removed from the church altars and replaced with copies of Mein Kampf. The cross was also removed and replaced with the swastika. One of the most controversial Reich Church rules involved the Bible. Although Hitler quoted scripture in many of his early speeches, he later referred to it as a fairy tale invented by the Jews. And in 1942, the Bible became a banned book in Germany. Adolf Hitler hated the Bible. He had his own Bible printed, 100,000 copies. There are some copies still around, but many of them were destroyed by people who, who realized what Hitler had done. In Hitler's Bible, all Hebrew words, like hallelujah, were removed. He also replaced the Ten Commandments with 12 of his own. Among them, keep the blood pure and your honor holy. Maintain and multiply the heritage of your forefathers. Joyously serve the people with work and sacrifice. Honor your Fuhrer and Master. Hitler also wrote his own version of the Lord's Prayer to be recited by the Hitler Youth. Adolf Hitler, you are our great Fuhrer. Thy name makes the enemy tremble. Thy third right comes, thy will alone is law upon the earth. Let us hear daily thy voice and order us by thy leadership, for we will obey to the end and even with our lives. We praise thee, hail Hitler, Fuhrer my Fuhrer, given me by God. Protect and preserve my life for long. I thank you for my daily bread. Be with me for a long time. Do not leave me, Fuhrer my Fuhrer, my faith, my light, Hail, my Fuhrer. Hitler had his own church, his own Bible, and even his own hymn, sung every day in German schools. Now that Hitler had set up his own Reich religion, it was time to get rid of the competition. And while his persecution of the Jews was well known, his final solution for Christians remained a secret for more than four decades. In 2002, a Jewish law student uncovered a report from the Nuremberg trials in the 1940s. It was compiled by members of the OSS, an American spy agency in World War II. The report was called The Nazi Master Plan, The Persecution of the Christian Churches. And it laid out a step-by-step -step plan to de-Christianize Germany. Take over the churches from within using party sympathizers. Discredit, jail, or kill Christian leaders. Reindoctrinate the congregants. Give them a new faith in Germany's Third Reich. So where were Germany's Christians in all of this? Most of them were too frightened to protest.
but a small remnant of Christians did stand up against the Reich Church. A group of 3,000 Protestants, known as the Confessing Church, openly defied Hitler and paid the price. Adolf Hitler said, I'll make those damned parsons feel the power of the state in a way they'd never believed possible. If I ever have the slightest suspicion that they're getting dangerous, I will shoot the lot of them. 700 pastors from the Confessing Church were arrested. Many of them were murdered or sent to concentration camps. There is such a thing as evil, and this man is evil. Hitler has no permanent loyalties. If you cross him, you'll die. The most important aspect of Christianity that Hitler ignored was the belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. That's a role Hitler preferred to take for himself. And even when he did mention Jesus, it wasn't the Jesus of the Bible. For example, he refused to admit the fact that Jesus was Jewish. So they didn't take any notice of John chapter 4, where the woman at the well said, how is it you being a Jew? And Jesus didn't say, hang on, I'm a Gentile. And then you find the genealogies in the book of Luke. They go right back through David, through to Abraham. So obviously they didn't believe the scriptures and they just made up their own Jesus. The Jesus Hitler made up was an Aryan, whom he often referred to as the Nazarene and the first great enemy of the Jews. Adolf Hitler denied the deity of Christ and forced people to worship him as God. Then he killed or imprisoned hundreds of Christian pastors and hatched a detailed plan to destroy the church. If Adolf Hitler was a Christian, as many people suggest, then he wasn't a very good one. If you are truly regenerated by the Holy Spirit, you're born again, you will have the evidence of fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, and temperance. So if you haven't got love, you're not a Christian. The really chilling part about doing this story was just how easy it was to fool the Christians throughout Europe, uh, that in the, in the middle of an economic crisis, they were so willing to look to Hitler as a, as a savior uh, that they forgot the tests that the Bible laid out, and they were all hoodwinked. Just yesterday, Pope uh, Francis has indicated that he wants to release the Vatican archive. This has never been seen. There was a pope during Hitler's reign. He was Pope Pius XII. He's got a wonderful nickname. He's called Hitler's Pope, and he's the one that uh, got into the relationship and actually signed a deal uh, with Hitler that he wouldn't oppose him as long as there was still freedom of religion. Uh, he obviously got hoodwinked, and it would be wonderful to actually look at the records, what happened, what was promised, why this incredible deal, uh, and what happened to uh, trying to save the Jews, because it was real clear early on uh, that they were at, at stake. Uh, what wasn't also clear was Christians were at stake, too, and it wasn't until 1942 that he really unveiled the plan, well, I want to wipe out Christianity as well. That's the test, and you find it from Daniel. One of the things uh, the spirit of Antichrist does, it kills Jews and it kills Christians.